Gnaeus Julius Agricola earned his place in the annals of history as the Roman general who made a lasting impact by subduing Caledonia, even though he didn't entirely conquer the territory we recognize as Scotland today. His military campaign left an indelible mark on both Roman and Scottish historical narratives, resonating for many years to come. As the governor of Britain and a seasoned military leader, Agricola had clear objectives. In the late 70s AD, he directed his military endeavors towards consolidating Roman control over Wales. Subsequently, he shifted his focus to England, aiming to achieve similar dominance. However, Scotland remained untouched by Roman forces at this juncture. In his quest to exert control, Agricola aimed to alter this reality. Following triumphs in Wales and England, he set his sights on Caledonia. The indigenous tribes initially offered a formidable resistance, launching a nocturnal assault on Rome's Legio IX Hispana. Despite the Caledonians' attempt, Agricola's strategic decision to deploy cavalry reinforcements resulted in the dispersion of the ambush. The indigenous population had assembled a formidable army, estimated at around 30,000 soldiers. Although numerically comparable to Agricola's forces, the Caledonians were aware of the Roman superiority in a direct confrontation. Hence, they opted for a guerrilla strategy. Contrary to their desire to avoid a pitched battle, Agricola implemented a tactical move by capturing Caledonian storehouses. This maneuver compelled the Caledonians to make a difficult choice, engage in battle or face starvation. Naturally, they chose not to starve. Agricola would encounter his counterpart, Calgacus, in the decisive battle of Mons Graupius in 83 AD. Here, the formidable Caledonian force clashed with the Romans. Despite the natives putting up a significant fight, the Romans achieved a relatively swift victory. Over half of the Caledonian army fled, and the remaining forces were defeated in battle. The Romans had penetrated deeper into Caledonia surpassing the territories explored by previous governors. Agricola's remarkable success, however, might have been the very reason why Emperor Domitian recalled him from Britain in 85 AD. The prevention of the complete subjugation of the Caledonians could have been motivated by a desire to avoid overshadowing Domitian's own victories in Germany. After Agricola's departure from the British Isles, significant Roman troop withdrawals occurred in the Scottish territories. The Romans retreated to a previously established border, compelled by the necessity to redirect forces to other pressing areas. Devastating losses in present-day Transylvania compelled Rome to redirect its attention, temporarily diverting focus from Caledonia. The looming Dacian War took precedence, relegating Scotland to a lower priority, particularly considering the fierce resistance from the native tribes. Furthermore, there wasn't a compelling incentive for the Romans to expend resources and manpower on Caledonia. From an economic perspective, the prospect of conquest held some allure, given the presence of valuable natural resources like silver and gold in the Scottish territories. Subjugating the Caledonians offered the potential for tapping into a new population and taxing the region. Nevertheless, while Scotland did possess some untapped resources, it wasn't particularly abundant in them, and it appeared unlikely that the Romans could completely overpower the indigenous tribes. This indicated that investing additional efforts in the comprehensive conquest of Caledonia might yield rewards, though it would pose considerable challenges. Rome, however, had to divert its attention to other priorities at the moment. It was only a matter of time until a new leader ascended to the throne, contemplating a reassessment of the situation. Lucius Septimius Severus, the subsequent Roman leader, aspired to subdue the Caledonians during the initial years of his reign as emperor. In Roman Britain, the untamed northern tribes grew progressively belligerent, intensifying their raids on territories controlled by Rome. The Caledonians seized the opportunity created by a newfound vulnerability in Rome's British defenses, arising after Governor Claudius Albinus rebelled against Septimius Severus in 195 AD. 
While Emperor Septimius Severus successfully handled the rebellion led by Albinus, the repercussions were significant. The troops Albinus had deployed upon their return to Britain suffered massive casualties, leaving the Hadrian Wall and overall Roman defenses critically understaffed. The resulting vulnerability in the Roman defenses allowed the Caledonians to exploit weaknesses and launch more frequent raids. In 207 AD, Sancho, the new governor of Roman Britain, urgently communicated to Emperor Septimius Severus, cautioning that the dwindling Roman defenses might soon prove inadequate against the increasing Caledonian threat. Responding to the plea, Septimus Severus, along with 50,000 troops, arrived on British soil in 208 AD. Upon landing, the emperor directed his forces toward the Hadrian Wall, prioritizing the reinforcement and fortification of this crucial defensive structure. Severus then advanced northward, securing the territory between the present-day Hadrian Wall and the former border at the Antonine Wall. This successful expansion strengthened the newly established old border. With his gaze set further north, the emperor contemplated a path akin to Agricola's historic incursion into Caledonia. Despite his sizable force and a strategy to potentially surprise the Caledonians, Severus faced challenges. The local tribes, versed in guerrilla warfare, refused to engage the Romans directly, continuing their elusive tactics. The difficult terrain and the tenacity of the Caledonians thwarted Severus's plans for a swift and decisive victory. Reassessing the situation, Severus adjusted his strategy. Rather than pursuing an aggressive push further into Caledonia, he decided to focus on reclaiming the forts previously established by Agricola. Additionally, a scorched earth policy was implemented in the areas beyond these forts, aiming to deprive the Caledonians of resources and disrupt their ability to sustain prolonged resistance. The altered Roman strategy appeared to yield results, prompting several Caledonian tribes to initiate peace negotiations with the invaders. Faced with the prospect of preventing the complete devastation of their territory and forces, these tribes sought diplomatic resolutions with Rome. Severus, however, remained steadfast in his objectives. Instead of entertaining negotiations, he pursued his ambition to not only secure the northern territories, but also to eradicate the Caledonians completely by the year 210 AD. Severus reorganized his forces, assigning a significant portion of the army to his son, Caracalla, who undertook an independent campaign beyond the Antonine Wall. During this period, Emperor Septimius Severus reportedly issued an order for the genocide of the indigenous Caledonian tribes, a task entrusted to Caracalla. The intention was for Severus to eventually unite with his son, bringing the remaining troops to facilitate the complete annexation of Scotland. The plan encountered a setback when Emperor Septimius Severus fell ill and decided to return for rest and recuperation. Unfortunately, Severus would never have the chance to recover as he eventually succumbed to his ailment in February of 211 AD. With his passing, the responsibility of completing the invasion now rested solely on the shoulders of his son and heir to the throne, Caracalla. In light of his father's demise, Caracalla deemed it imprudent to persist in Caledonia. Consequently, he promptly terminated the war and initiated the journey back to Rome, signaling the conclusion of the empire's noteworthy endeavors to conquer the Scottish territories. Over time, as Roman interest and efforts waned, the troops at the northern border found themselves compelled to retreat back to the Hadrian Wall content with maintaining the original boundary of Roman Britain. After Severus, no subsequent Roman leader made a genuine attempt to conquer Caledonia. The primary focus shifted to manning and defending the Hadrian's Wall, especially as the Caledonians resumed their raids. The decision not to launch significant conquest efforts in Scotland after Severus can be attributed to various factors, including terrain considerations. However, it is evident that Caledonia did not represent a worthwhile investment of Roman resources, both in terms of time and manpower.
The decision not to conquer Scotland can be attributed to the lack of sufficient natural resources, agricultural benefits, or other strategic advantages that would justify the continuation of a brutal war with the local population. Rome had to prioritize its resources and attention on more pressing conflicts, such as the Dacian War, making the conquest of Scotland unfeasible. In short, the Romans didn't conquer Scotland because it was not a strategic priority and the costs outweighed the potential benefits.